hey guys welcome back today we're doing something a little bit different i decided to do a sit down video because i did not pre-record so so let's get right into it as you guys can tell from the title these are 15 slow living practices that i've started to help me change my life overall so the first one is i actually started doing this before i even started my slow living journey but that is comparing myself and my journey to others one thing i learned in that six month time frame where i was doing this very often i learned just because they are here and you are here doesn't mean you are less than if you guys know what i mean i'm not going to compare my life to anybody else's because first of all i don't know what they went through to get there i don't know if they're even happy why they're there my main focus and purpose in this life for me is to be happy with the life that i'm creating for myself and comparing my life to somebody else's when i don't even want what they have is just bizarre to me number two is i have intentionally set aside time each day to do absolutely nothing when i say absolutely nothing nothing i mean literally sit on the couch and stare into space and daydream about god knows what i have set aside time for that i do about 30 minutes to an hour of that just because i have noticed like, when we get busy like, i am doing a slow living lifestyle that is my lifestyle but like, there are moments and seasons or and times and days where i get super busy so i know like, for me to not feel overwhelmed i have to literally set a tight time to just like woosa and just like, be in the moment and do absolutely nothing so i do that every day no matter what i don't care if it's like, 30 minutes or an hour i have to some people don't have that luxury but I thank God that I do. Number three is I now spend so much time in nature. If you guys watch my videos, I know I'm always outside in the woods, the nature, wherever, a path, a park, whatever it might be. I'm always in nature. Nature is very healing for the soul. It's insane. Like, even today, we went out to um, Ohio Pal and like, we get in nature and I'm just like, I feel so good as soon as we got out there. Like, and I feel good now. I feel recharged. I feel... I don't know how to explain it if you guys are like nature people like I am then y'all know what I mean but I spend so much time in nature so get out in nature that's all I have to say number four I no longer try to keep up with the Joneses at all I know when we all were younger we had these dreams and one of these things but as we get older a lot of our goals change so I no longer try to keep up with the Joneses I had a top goal that I wanted to reach but the closer or the more I try to reach that goal the un more unhappy I became and personally I don't feel like anything is worth that just because I'm trying to get to this goal don't mean I'm gonna reach that goal so all this time that I'm spending to be unhappy I can be happy doing something that I truly want when I was trying to reach that goal I thought that's what I wanted until I got so close to it I'm just like if this what it means to be successful in the eyes of society I don't want it at all not even the slightest bit of it so my goals definitely have changed I'm still very much ambitious but not like the societal way if that makes sense like, number five is getting rid of things that no longer serve me if you look around my room in here it's a bit much going on but it's a very organized much going on everything i have in here pretty much serves a purpose in some sort of way in my life as it is right now so number six is sitting with my feelings i remember being younger i would never sit with my feelings i would never allow myself to cry because i've seen it as a weakness but it's not to really acknowledge how you're feeling at that moment is one of the best things that you can do for yourself because when you don't that's a, just an ass and bottles up until you just go kaboom all right so sitting with my emotions trying to understand my emotions and why i'm feeling like that or trying to understand why this certain thing made me feel like that it does wonders it does amazing for my mental health it does amazing for my feelings it's overall a really good thing to do especially when you're feeling upset is really just sit with your feelings don't 
react off your emotions just sit with them figure out what's going on maybe journal that's my biggest thing when i'm upset i journal like no other when i'm upset i put everything down on paper number seven is stretching um i've had a couple injuries in my time and i'm figuring out if i just stretched i never would have got that injury if i just stretch i would be okay stretching every morning is amazing it makes me feel good i don't feel so weight down throughout the day and that brings us to number eight which is moving my body on a daily none of us are getting younger we're all getting older no matter what it's, it's gonna happen it's inevitable and, and there's nothing you can do about it so Moving my body every day, I've noticed a lot of the healthiest people that I see that are older generation is because they move their bodies because they're doing something active. They're really moving their body on a daily. So that's what I'm doing now. I have to take care of my body so my body can take care of me. Number nine, this is one of my favorites because I used to not be so good at this. <laughs> I say I'm the youngest of four. I was a very spoiled child. Um, even when I went to college, my roommate was a chef major. So <laughs> look, forgive me. But cooking at home has become one of my favorite activities, one of my favorite therapies that I am doing. I've noticed when I'm at home and I cook at home and the food comes out so good, I'm just so satisfied with life in that moment. It's just everything is right. Everything is good. Even when it doesn't come out really good, I'm still very happy because I'm like, well, you didn't go to a restaurant, you didn't spend any of your money. So then it gives me a chance to try to make that thing again and try to make it even better. So I enjoy cooking at home. Number 10, um, this one has made my life easier, I will have to admit. And that is washing dishes, making sure that there's no dishes in the sink when I go to bed. That has been one of the best things for me because I am an avid breakfast eater. That's one thing I have to have in the day if i don't eat anything it will be breakfast so just making sure that the kitchen is clean when i go down there in the morning to cook is amazing it's a great feeling and even those days because i don't do it all the time but for the most part i would say it's about 30 percent at a time 70 percent i'm doing those dishes 30 percent i'm not but even if i don't do them that night i'll do them in that morning when i'm making breakfast I never knew how much I was affected by this until I started being present. Number 12 is being very intentional about what and who I allow in my life. I've always been a pretty private person, but being very intentional about what and who I allow in my life has, I think it's been a game changer for my shopping addiction. Let's just say that. It's been a crazy game changer for that. But when I shop now, I literally shop with intentions. I may have always written a list, but we veer off those lists um, or whatever. But this time, I'm literally like so insane and so anal about what I'm getting when I'm going shopping. And I hate it, but I also just really love it. Because it's like, girl, this is what we're getting. This is it. And that's all nothing else and it's been working out really well for me but number 13 is giving myself grace i know there's times where we all just just really get down and get in a rut and we're hard on ourselves but i had to stop doing this because i've noticed like, when i go in and i don't want to be going in on myself like that there's no reason why i should ever have to degrade myself or feel bad for myself from decisions that I'm making in life so yes get giving myself grace has been best thing I could have did for my self-worth ever I don't know what else how I, there's no other way I can explain that number 14 is cutting out distractions so I guess I will say for this, it would be just doing mindless things for no reason to feel busy. I remember where I would just constantly do stuff to feel like I was busy, but I was feeling like I was never getting anything done ever. So just cutting all that out, cutting out the distractions, cutting out anything that wasn't serving me, anything that wasn't making me happy, anything that wasn't advancing me. I cut it all out. There's no point of it. Just cutting out distractions. And the last one is being grateful. I notice when I'm depressed or in a sad mood, the first thing I tell myself I need to do is write down things that I'm grateful for because it just brings me, it grounds me. 
it literally brings me back it makes me aware of where I could be at instead of where I am at so if I'm feeling upset about something or I'm mad like I gotta do a certain thing I'm just like girl you should be grateful like, say that I'm mad that I have to walk a couple miles or something I'm, my first thought is girl you remember that time where you couldn't even walk without a freaking boot or crutches on yeah cut it out so like, I check myself really fast at a time when it comes to this stuff and I think that's why I'm able to have a positive mindset don't get me wrong you need to feel whatever you're feeling that's okay feel your feelings and understand those and sit with your feelings but once you're done sitting with them feelings get out of that because you could be worse off there's always somebody else who's worse off not saying dismiss what's going on with yourself but move on don't dwell on that don't go into like crazy depression type of era or whatever you want to call it under just sit with them and then move on there's no point of wasting away at all I noticed depression was because I felt I was getting a lot of pressure from outside entities and those things that it just wasn't things I wanted to do and I had to really just sit down with myself like girl is this your life are you going to live your life or are you going to live your life for someone else I'm living my life for me so I no longer get depressed because now I don't care about what anybody got to say about my life and it's amazing and I really hope other people realize that sooner than later because i've noticed that's where a lot of my depression things came from I'm trying to live a life that somebody wanted me to live instead of the life i wanted to live so that's what i do today i live my life the way i want to live my life and i don't really give a flying what anybody else have to say about it so those are 15 slow living things that have changed my life forever and i hope you guys take something from this video and one of these tips help you. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.